Okay, Mr. Minnick here, helping my students with for loop worksheet number one. Make sure you read these directions thoroughly, and let's uh, begin. Number one's already been done for you, so I'm not going to redo it. The final answer here is six. It should be circled because I like that. Uh, and the output in a fictitious uh, output window there is uh, one, two, three, four, five, all on the same line. Number two, using this uh, place here to, to keep track of number twos. Here you lie. Now notice, in this for loop, the variable i is being declared as an int and initialized to zero, all as part of what we call the initializing expression. So I put a little zero there. And now we check the control expression to see if it's true or false. Yes, zero is less than five, true. So we do go through the loop and we system out print i. i is currently zero, so a zero prints out. And notice that it concatenates itself with a blank space so that well, there's a blank space there. Now the loop travels back up to the top, and with a for loop, on the second go around, I always like to say you come in from the right side. You come in from the right. So you hit this step expression, and it says to I++, cross that out and make it a 1. You come in further from the right, and you look at the control expression again, and you ask Charles, is true or false? Is i less than 5? Yeah. He says true, so we do go through the loop again, and we system out print i, which is now 1, and keep in mind that there was a space padded in there, and another space prints out. And then we loop back up to the top, we come in from the right, and we i++, plus plus, and 2 is less than 5, so we system out print i again. I think you see the pattern now. We I plus plus to three. It prints that three. It I plus plus is to four. Is four less than five? True. So it does indeed print the four in another space. It goes back up. It I plus pluses. So I is now five. And now we ask Tristan, we ask him to loudly for the video here, uh, tell me is the control expression currently true or false? Yes, true. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm sorry. He said false, everybody. So false. Five is not less than five. So this is false, as he said. We do not go through the loop again, and we are finished with this exercise. Circle this little five as your final answer. For the final value stored in I happens to be five. And the output, let it be known, is happens to be... Uh, this right here with spaces in between those digits. Okay, number uh, three. What little twist is, uh, is done in number three? Well, the loop, again, does iterate i, uh, goes from zero to five, and then i plus plus is, it goes by ones, but check this out. i plus one is in the parentheses here, where it wasn't up here, so let's, uh, let's delicately uh, trace this. Okay, i starts at zero. I'm going to use a different color so that you're, uh, you're not confused here. i starts at z uh, zero. Um, that is true, so we go through the loop. Now, carefully work from inside the parentheses out. i plus one is currently zero plus one, which simplifies to one. So a one does output concatenated with a blank space. But this did not change i. This was just an arithmetic expression that happened to be inside a system out print. This is not an assignment statement that's saying make i equal to i plus 1. Or it is not an i plus equals 1. It simply is what it is. So we now loop back up to the top of the for loop. We come in from the right side like I like to explain it as. We, now we I++, plus plus. so cross out that zero and make it a one. And we come in further from the right, and we inspect the control expression, which, Ricky, is that true or false right now? True. true. So we do indeed go through the loop again, and we system out print. Question is, Brian, what prints out on the screen at this moment because of the system out print statement? Yes, correct. A 2 prints out. 
because this i, which is currently 1, plugs in there temporarily, and we simplify i plus 1 to 2, and now we system out print a 2 concatenated with a space, and that's why he just told me to print out a 2. We do not cross this 1 out and make it a 2 yet. Not, not when we execute the system out print statement. Okay, well, we're done with the system out print statement. So we iterate back up to the top of the for loop. We come in from the right side, and now we I++ and continue. I'll fast forward here. Um, a 3 prints out. We I++. A 4 prints out. We I++. 4 is less than 5. So 4 plus 1 prints out, which means 5 prints out. We then go back up to the top and we I++, and now we ask Tristan again, is uh, this control expression currently true or false, Tristan? False. False. So we don't system out print anything else, and indeed we are finished, and this is my final value stored in I, a 5, so circle it. But the output is different from exercise number 2 on this worksheet. It's 1 through 5 instead of 0 through 4. But it is what it is. All because of, all because of simply the difference of this right here and this right here caused two different outputs. On the AP exam, they try to trick you and they will give you all kinds of variations that look similar. And instead of just going from I equals zero to less than five, they'll make it like less than 500. So you don't have time to trace this. So what I like to do is I like to fast forward. I just kind of start I at zero, find the pattern, then I do a dot, dot, dot. Then I pick up with like I being 98. And I carefully, slowly go across the finish line to where maybe I less than 100 turns to false. That saves me a lot of time and patterns are found everywhere in computer science. And that's what gives you guys and girls good jobs out there because you know how to find patterns. Okay, let's do one here, uh, number four, where I uh, looks like I go by twos. So uh, n number four, I starts at zero. I is indeed less than or equal to eight, so that's true. And we system out print I, no trickiness there, it prints a zero. We come back up to the top, we add two to I because the plus equals two. Crossing that out, making it a two. We ask, is two less than or equal to eight? True, so we system out print again. Now we're printing a two with the space. Then we uh, go back up, we plus equal two, so it means that we bump it up to four. And then we check, is four less than or equal to eight? It is, so we print the four. We bump it up to a six, we print the six. We bump it up to an eight eventually. And then we ask Tristan, is eight less than or equal to eight? Yes it is, because it equals. So we do indeed print the letter, the number eight with a space. And then we go back up. We add two to make it a 10. I don't give you much room on this worksheet here. 10 is not less than eight or equal to eight. So we finally achieved our false and we're finished with exercise four. I ended up at 10. That's just the way it rolled. Printing, we printed out 0 through 8, all the even numbers, 0 through 8. I'm just going to uh, skim through the rest of this worksheet that eventually you'll do for homework. And uh, let's look for any other uh, trickinesses that we might see. Oh, look, in number 5, instead of I++, I have an I minus minus. So we are stepping down from a high number to a low number. And notice that the greater than here is a greater than and not a less than like it was on previous exercises. Okay, it works. Number six, I'm dividing I by two. Now I will warn you, because I is an integer, and because the number two is a whole number, an integer, at some point in this exercise, I ends up being three. At some point, I is three. And at that moment, when you take three divided by two in Java, it does not turn into 1.5. Java truncates, and it's called integer division. I think the directions on this worksheet warn you about this. Maybe, maybe not. 
in any way, at that moment, somewhere in your output, it will be system out printing 1 with a blank space, not 1.5. In other words, when i is an odd number, the 0.5 that ends up being there mathematically gets chopped off. Good luck with that one. It is a good AP level question. Number 7, I see we're dividing by 2. Again, there's going to be integer division, which causes decimal places to automatically chop off, making that one a little tricky. And number 8, uh, I don't know. I don't see any tricks there. We just multiply by 2 at some point. And number 9, I don't see anything real tricky there. We subtract 1 with i. And number 10, we are using mod, modulus. We are checking to see if i is an even number or not. When you take a number and mod it by 2 and check to see if that equals 0, you are checking to see if it's an even number. I know we haven't studied if statements yet this school year, but they work just like they did in Visual Basic. Mm -hmm. And right here, this is the body of the, of the if statement. If statements should use curly braces. In this case, I was lazy and didn't. But good luck with number 10. It's tricky. And numbers 11 and 12, you know, they're tricky too. I recommend reading the lecture notes first before you do this worksheet. Um, because there might be an infinite loop somewhere on this worksheet, according to the directions. Um, and there could be a situation where there's an error of some kind. Just be ready for that.